the supply chain crisis is creating the worst logistics nightmare the industry sector has ever seen. The people who actually run the supply chain industry are becoming increasingly desperate as disruptions continue to emerge in every link of the system. A myriad of problems is creating new choke points and backlogs and also sparking chaos at ports all around the world. And a new survey has exposed the many challenges plaguing supply chains and why they are likely to stay broken for the foreseeable future. But before sharing some shocking warnings and stats with you, please don't forget to support us by leaving a thumbs up in this video and subscribing to our channel so you can keep up to date with the most important news. Several supply chain data sources reveal that many professionals are having problems tackling supply chain challenges this year. It's never been harder to find solutions that actually help to fix this fragile system. According to Blue Yonder's 2022 Supply Chain and Logistics Executive Survey, almost all businesses, or about 88%, have faced disruption this year with over a quarter, or 26%, facing prolonged interruptions in their operations due to supply chain issues. On top of that, at least 43% of companies are experiencing staffing shortages, and 38% reported that their production is currently stalled. All in all, 58% of businesses said their customers will be facing delays this year as the port of Shanghai restarts and the shipping nightmare begins. It may not come as a surprise that most businesses are facing supply chain challenges over the past year, but the research demonstrates that supply chain disruptions are here to stay, warned Sri Hariharan, Blue Yonder's corporate vice president. In the US, an unexpected explosion of demand a shortage of port workers, an absence of available chassis to move freight, and a weakened transportation infrastructure for domestic deliveries have combined to cause companies to fail to meet production, fail to meet delivery, and fail to meet distribution targets over the past 12 months. Consequently, our domestic chains have been left with swamped warehouses and a massive surge in traffic at ports as containers wait for days rather than hours to offload goods. To make things worse, the U.S. is struggling with a shortage of additional logistics space that could help alleviate some of this pressure. A recent survey conducted by Prologis estimates that available logistics space in the U.S. will dry up in less than 16 months. The expansionary average is 36 months, and anything less than 50 months is consistent with positive real rent growth, the report says. Vacancies are at historic lows in the U.S. as companies move to online fulfillment models and higher inventories. Intense competition for warehouses is pushing rents higher than ever, and we expect this to continue into next year, Prologis Senior Vice President Belinda McLaughlin noted. Competition for warehouse space led to record first quarter rent growth in the U.S. in 2022, as rent soared 8.5% quarter over quarter, the Prologis report shows. But while demand for more logistics is high, supply continues to get tighter and tighter, and this has resulted in reduced absorption. Logistics customers absorbed 88 million square feet in the first quarter of 2022, down from about 120 million square feet in the prior quarter, the survey says. Materials shortages are fueling this scarcity. New supply in the first quarter of 2022 was lower than expected at 68 million square feet. The vacancy rate fell by 20 basis points from the prior quarter to a record low of 3.2%. The situation has provoked significant issues in the manufacturing sector, and executives are scrambling to come up with quick fixes. Over half of supply chain executives, or roughly 56%, said that they have increased spending to restore supply chain resilience over the past year. Of those who invested in their supply chain in the past year, nearly half of the respondents, or 
49% have invested $6 million or more. Over a quarter, 26%, have invested between six to $10 million. And nearly a quarter, around 24%, have invested $10 million or more. But despite all the spending, problems have persisted, as explained by Jeremy Page, a founding partner at trade law firm Page Fuhrer. He said delays in port arrival, offloading and onward movement have caused reductions in production shifts, the periodic shutting down of entire lines or factories, and the rationing of parts to those products or models either highest in demand or in realized profit, he said. On the same note, the president and CEO of Hewlett-Packard Enterprise, Antonio Neri, shared similar concerns about this remarkable slowdown in production and manufacturer's strategy to only produce top-selling parts and goods. We're going through a significant supply chain disruption, and the supply chain disruption happens on different levels of the industry. What we see in the vast majority of the disruption is what we call the low-level components, not the high-value other commodities. And that has to do with the substrate availability and the fact that we're dealing with very strong demand, both on the consumer side and now the enterprise side, Neri highlighted. So we believe this is going to continue for some time. However, it's not just about the availability of components. It's the ability of an enterprise to continue to redesign and use alternative components. Obviously, this is going to continue to be a challenge in the foreseeable future, he alerted. At the same time, manufacturers have also been rushing to build inventories at critical points of the supply chain. However, this solution is simply not sustainable. Building more inventory points is a very topical issue at the moment. For many companies, that was the answer to mitigate risk and create more stocking points. However, it is expensive and risky, he continued. The main issue with creating more inventory is that essentially it creates more demand on the supply chain and does not push suppliers to absorb costs. On top of that, payments get deferred. So a 20% dial-up on inventories is a 100% dial-up on inflation, notes Douglas Kent, Executive Vice President of Strategy and Alliances at the Association for Supply Chain Management. Complex issues require multi-phase solutions, and significant changes take time to occur. It's not easy, as we're facing myriad different situations. Some recent studies have highlighted the importance of gaining additional visibility in the multi-hierarchy in supply chains in order to have a control tower viewpoint before disruption even occurs, Kent outlined. However, Supply chain market research shows that the majority of companies, specifically 69%, do not have complete visibility of their supply chains, and around 30% of companies don't analyze the source of supply chain disruptions whatsoever. Enterprise visibility of the entire operation is the only way to truly optimize the supply chain and build lasting resilience. This means that almost 70% of businesses are in an extremely vulnerable position and are still at risk of facing further disruptions. Even worse, 46% of supply chain professionals still rely on Excel spreadsheets for their operations. Even though Excel is an important tool for organizations, keeping track of hundreds of thousands of orders manually on a spreadsheet seems like a recipe for disaster. Mud Hafturba, the Vice President of Supply Chain Strategy at Cooper Software Inc., revealed that one of the main aggravators of the supply chain crisis is outdated processes. Manual and labor-intensive operations force employees to spend hours every week doing repetitive tasks that could be automated for greater efficiency and accuracy, allowing people to focus on more rewarding work, he explains. According to Durpa, he estimates 60 to 70 percent of an analytics employee's time is spent gathering data, while only 30 to 40 percent is actually dedicated to analyzing the figures and providing insights. All of these logistics headaches 
have largely fallen to supply chain managers to sort out, making their jobs far tougher and mentally straining over the past two years. For that reason, supply chain managers are quitting their jobs at the fastest pace since 2016 due to a mix of burnout and late payments. In 2021 alone, late payments jumped from 34% to 43%, levels not seen since 2017, according to a survey by fintech company Talia. A new LinkedIn study calculated the turnover by analyzing member profiles to determine the number of people who left their jobs each month. For supply chain managers, the average quitting rate increased by a staggering 28% in the past year. That's the highest level since LinkedIn started tracking the data. The survey also found that loss of talent accounts for 51% of supply chain disruptions. Candidates are less willing to go to a firm that is outdated in systems or outdated in general processes. They don't want to be as stressed out as they've been over the last few years, argued Emily Prendergast, an executive director at DSJ. She estimates that 65 to 70 percent of supply chain professionals are planning to look for new job opportunities over the next six months. As problems pile up, those who run the system are getting absolutely overwhelmed, and many are just throwing in the towel and giving up. The widespread nature of the disruptions is going to keep the system clogged for decades to come. In essence, Supply chains are only as strong as their weakest link, and the myriad of issues emerging across every sector of the supply chains have demonstrated that weak links are multiplying much faster than resilience can be built. In other words, as disruptions mount and the system crumbles, the countdown to the next supply chain shock has already begun.